It's Winsenberg on the weekend. Why not get ready for Halloween? It's pumpkin time. If you've been by the store, you've seen some of the pumpkins out there. And Cheryl Stoughton is with us from Pumpkin Masters. Tell folks about the kits that you have available in stores. Well, the kits that we have were based on a 50-year family tradition of carving pumpkins. Um, but the method is to take a pattern and you place it on your pumpkin and you poke holes along the design lines with a special little tool and it transfers the pattern right onto your pumpkin. Hmm. You take the pattern off, and then you use little specialized carving saws to saw dot to dot. It's real easy. Very easy. Much you, better than using a knife. <laughs> you have all the tools. You have the little saws and little what, all these little, I don't even know what you call them, little pokers. Is that uh-huh. there? Yep, poker. Yeah. There's a drill that helps make perfectly round circles in your pumpkin as well. What are some of the patterns that you have? Um, well, some of the most popular patterns are the scariest patterns. Um, we have thousands of patterns. Um, we put eight new patterns every year into our kit, so we kind of give people variety and people who like to collect them from year to year and mm-hmm. then keep them and pick and choose um, what they're going to use. We have faces, scenes. Well, they're very artistic, too, very detailed. I'm surprised, you know, because my pumpkin-making ability, you know, is the basic jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> you know, you just take your knife and you cut out a couple holes and that's it. But these are extremely artistic and some very clever designs here. So you don't necessarily have to have artistic ability in order to do this. Right. That's the whole theory behind the kit. Because, you know, I think we all have memories of carving pumpkins with knives and, you know, losing teeth when you're carving, you know, losing the pumpkin's tooth as you're carving right. with your knife. Right. Let's go through some of the things. For instance, how do you choose the right pumpkin? Um, what you need to do is try to find a pumpkin that's smooth. The smoother the face of the pumpkin, the easier it is to carve, not one with big ridges. And you want a pumpkin that will sit flat on the ground or wherever you're planning on displaying it. Does, um, the, does the size of the pumpkin make a difference? Um, well, not with our patterns because you can photocopy or enlarge your patterns or reduce them in okay. size depending on what size you get. Um, but one of the keys to our carving is scraping the wall of the pumpkin until it's about an inch thick because it makes it a lot easier to carve. What do you mean? Um, well, the tools, you know, are a small saw. Yeah. And if you're trying to carve through two inches of pumpkin, it oh, gets okay. real hard. But if you if you scrape it down to about an inch thick, you can just whiz right through the pattern. Yeah, the actual kids' kit comes with a scraper that, that you actually dig out the goo from the middle of the pumpkin, right? Right. It's nice and small. It fits perfectly in the pumpkin, and it has kind of a sharp edge mm-hmm. to it, so you're able to scrape, and it makes cleaning out the pumpkin so much faster and easier. When is the right time to buy it? I mean, I, should, I mean, should I be buying the pumpkin right now, or should I wait two weeks? How close to Halloween um, should I wait? Well, it depends. Some people like to decorate a lot earlier, and um, there's, you know, you can paint your pumpkin if you want to do it earlier to decorate. If you carve your pumpkin now, it's probably not going to make it until Halloween. <laughs> now, Amy, <laughs> our Amy, our board operator, has a little story. I think she went too early one year, didn't you, Amy? Weren't you uh, decorating a pumpkin? You actually were using the Pumpkin Masters kit, I think. Yeah, I made the black cat, and I did it too early, and it kind of molded and fell inside. It wasn't real attractive. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's things you can do if you want to keep, you know, carve your pumpkin a little bit, like a week before Halloween. Mm-hmm. Um, we have some tips where you can put petroleum jelly along the cut edges of the design, and that'll kind of help it. <laughs> oh, well, that's interesting. You can interesting. use a Q-tip. You don't have to touch it. <laughs> Ooh, um, that, 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 another that, one that, of that our pumpkin tips. feeling with the uh, petroleum jelly. Ooh, that just would feel good. So. <laughs> another one of our good tips is to um, spray the face of the carving with water and put some plastic wrap over the front of it and keep it in the refrigerator or a cool place while you're not having it out on display at mm-hmm. night. That'll really help keep it a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about tools? Now, you sell the tools, but I think just using kitchen knives are not the safest way to carve a pumpkin, right? No, because you really don't have a lot of control with knives, and so you can slip. And, you know, I've seen people, you know, my, my own personal experience, I've seen people cut themselves with, the, with knives and stuff and have to get stitches in the emergency room, and that's no fun. Yeah, it's amazing all the different things you have available. You even sell candles, uh you sell all sorts of devices. You sell things to open up the lid with. And so if people are interested, they just go to the local store or you're available online. Isn't that right, Cheryl? Yeah, we have a website at www.pumpkinmasters.com. Okay. There's a free pattern on there, too, that people can try out. That's www.pumpkinmasters.com. 
And Cheryl has sent us a bunch of these Pumpkin Master kits to give away. So what I'm going to do is take the first five callers. And all you have to tell me is how you've carved your pumpkin. It's Winsenberg on the weekend, Pumpkin Day. And Bob Lozier from CNN is still sitting here listening to the interview. And Bob, have you ever carved a pumpkin? No, but I'm going to learn today. I've got my pumpkin carving patterns. That's right. Isn't even these cool? Well, I don't know. I'm dangerous. I'd be dangerous <laughs> with the adult view. I, I'm not sure I wouldn't be dangerous with the kids thing, too. Uh, but what the heck? We could try yeah. it. Uh, Cheryl Stoughton is with us from Pumpkin Masters. They're available in local stores. These are kits, and they're not real expensive. they got little tools and patterns and all sorts of accessories. And Cheryl, we're going to go to the phone lines and find out uh, what people do with their pumpkins, okay? Let's start with Keith from Grimes. Hi, Keith. Hi. How do you do your pumpkin? Well, we, we've tried to paint. Of course, we're not very artistic. Yeah. So that doesn't turn out real well. But I tell you, these Pumpkin Master kits could really work well, right, Cheryl? Yeah, you get a pattern. So what? how the, much? <laughs> yeah. The pattern's right there. You just put the pattern on the pumpkin and put some little holes in, and then you start cutting around it. So That would be great. Great. You hold on, Keith. We'll give you one of those. And Bev, you're up next. Bev, how do you do a pumpkin? Well, I'm not a carver. I use markers. Markers? Yes. I like to use markers and put the face on. But doesn't and that wash off if it rains outside? No, not if you use permanent. Huh. Permanent markers won't wash off. Interest. So what kind of face do you draw? Oh, any kind of a face. But another thing I like to do is take wire and make glasses and put on them and fasten. I like to use anything I can get and add and put hats on them. Those are hats. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a cute idea, isn't it, Cheryl, to, to do the glasses? That's kind of unique. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can put a pipe in the mouth after you make it. You mm-hmm. know. I do do a little carving. You're artistic, I can tell, Beth. Yeah. <laughs> you hold on. We'll give you one of those pumpkin master kits. We're giving away some adult kits and some kid kits. Jeff is up next. Hi, Jeff. Hi, how you doing? Well, what do you do with a pumpkin? Oh, nothing too fancy. We tried to carve the word boo in it. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't quite make it? or what? Oh, it. Not professionally, no. It didn't look real well. You could tell what it was, though. So. You know, the kit that's out this year has the word beware on it. Can you imagine putting all six of those letters on a pumpkin with an exclamation point? It would take me an awfully big pumpkin. Well, all you need is this little pumpkin master's kit. Sounds great. So we'll get you one of those, okay? Thanks so much, Jeff. Jan is up next. Hi, Jan. Yes. What do you do with your pumpkin? Uh, last year I did a haunted house and also a um, black cat. And a, a real artistic one, or what did you do? Well, semi. <laughs> gave, it a, gave it sure a try. Just from scratch? Yes. Yeah. Wow, you're pretty good. Maybe you don't even need these kits. Oh, yes, definitely do. Looking forward to trying well, one. Well, that's great. They're available in stores and, of course, online at pumpkinmasters.com, and you have got one, okay? Thank you very much. So you hold on, and we've got one more to give away here. Larry, Larry, you're our last giveaway. What have you got? Hey. What kind of pumpkin do you do? Well, we do the traditional. We take the black magic marker, draw the triangle eyes and nose, and wind up with a toothless smile because the knife slips through the teeth. You sound like me, Larry. That's how I do it, too. And Cheryl, isn't that the way a lot of people do it? Yeah, uh uh-huh. And so Pumpkin Masters is just for you, Larry. Great. Okay, you hold on. We'll get your information. And we've given away our Pumpkin Master kits. Some will get the adult kit and some will get the kid kits. Cheryl, tell us about Pumpkin Masters and how it got started. It's very unusual, isn't it? Um, Yeah, like I was telling you earlier, it was based on a 50-year family tradition of carving pumpkins. The founder of the company and his four sisters, um, when their father died, they decided as a tribute to him, they would create a pumpkin carving kit based on the method that he taught them as a tribute to him. Hmm. So essentially it was just a family operation, and then they started to expand it nationally. Yeah, they worked out of their garage for quite a few years, and now they're working out of houses in Denver, Colorado. Oh, you're in Denver. (laughs) Uh-huh. Denver, the pumpkin capital of the world. Is that yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> now that we're here. <laughs> uh, you have some interesting tips that you give people. For instance, how do you photograph a lit pumpkin? Well, the one thing you want to do is um, make sure that you don't have your flash turned on on your camera. If your camera has a flash that you can't turn off, yeah. um, maybe put masking tape over the flash. Um, and then you want to make sure you light the, ca- the pumpkin real well with a couple of candles or even a battery-operated light and make sure your room is darkly lit or if it's at night, you know, do it outside. And then use a tripod or set the camera on something that will steady it to take the pictures. And then, you know, just take a variety of pictures. So just take you- a number of them. Yeah. Right. Now, you said inside. Now, I'm not used to ha- keeping a pumpkin inside. My whole life we've kept it outside. First of all, it smells, you know, <laughs> and so you don't want it inside unless you really like that that kind of smell. 
Uh, but do you keep a pumpkin inside? Um, no. Well, some people photograph them inside. Yeah, but I some people leave them outside. But some people like to make carved centerpieces for their um, table that they keep out for a little while. And what you can do is put a little bit of pumpkin pie spice on the lid of the pumpkin. And then when your candle's burning, it'll heat up that spice and makes a real nice smell in your house. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. You, you're not going to tell me to coat the inside of the pumpkin with Vaseline or something? <laughs> It'll help save it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll stay longer, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, can you create your own patterns, or is it pretty much um, you should just try to use the book? Well, I think, you know, I mean, we certainly encourage people to be creative, and, and people who want to design their own patterns, it's, it's great. All they need to do is draw it out and make sure that they, real, you know, figure out what pieces will come out, and, you know, so you don't have pieces coming out that you don't want to come out. And then mm. you can just tape your pattern onto your pumpkin and use the tools carve that pattern. What's your most popular pattern that you've created? Uh, probably Frankenstein. Really? Yeah, that's one of our most popular all-time patterns. For, for young boys, they love anything else. <laughs> hmm. And then the little girls love cats. Cats. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think you have a cat this year. It's called Socks on, uh -huh. the, on the pattern <laughs> book. So you can actually order the other patterns, not just the six or eight that are part of this year's book, right? Right. We have Well, we have a national contest. The people enter, they send in their photographs of their own, you know, creative pumpkins. And we have, people can get this winter sets of patterns from previous years, and they can also get other patterns that we've had out, all, you know, throughout the 12 years hmm. of Pumpkin Master. If people are interested in uh, entering the, their photographs in the contest, what do they do? Um, there is an entry form on the website, or there are entry forms in the pumpkin carving kit. Okay, so they just go to www.pumpkinmasters.com or buy the kit. Uh, you sell other things. We talked about the, uh, I think you have some kind of an electronic candle or something, electric light that uh, you stick in there. Yeah, we have a battery-operated light that we designed for kids so they could light their own pumpkins without the um, hazard of, you know, using candles and matches. Do you recommend not using real candles? Um, you know, it's pretty traditional to use candles, and it does make that nice, flickering, eerie effect in your pumpkin. Um, but, you know, if you like using a light, it's a lot safer, and you can get blinking lights. You know, the, mm -hmm. our light blinks, so it's kind of fun. That's neat. The disappears. Uh, what do you need to teach kids when you're making a pumpkin? What are things you need to be careful of? Um, probably with our kids' saw, you just want to make sure that they understand the method, which is kind of like sawing up and down like a sewing machine needle goes. Mm-hmm. And then to take out their saw and reinsert it when they're turning corners mm -hmm. so they don't break the blade. Cheryl's also got a great idea for you, a BYOP party. <laughs> Bring your own pumpkin, right, Cheryl? Yeah, we. a lot of our customers write in and tell us they have these huge pumpkin carving parties. That's a lot of fun. Just go out and get a Pumpkin Masters kit, invite the folks over, and have lots of fun doing different designs. Cheryl, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Steve. You can go online at pumpkinmasters.com.